Tinka's future vision was hilarious. Hi guys, hope you all are doing good. Your man Al is here with Chain Soldier episode 11 review so let's get moving. At first we see NEI, who remains concerned for the others while staying behind at the 7th squad dormitory. Then, attention returns to the confrontation between Aoba, Kyuka, and Tenka, with Kyuka engaging the Unihorn while Tenka handles Aoba. Kyuka regains her composure and attacks the Unihorn aggressively, while Aoba struggles to counter Tenka's abilities. Aoba attempts to use her superhuman speed against Tenka's black hole ability but is ultimately outmaneuvered, leaving herself vulnerable to attack. The battle between Aoba and Tenka continues for a while, with Aoba gaining a significant power boost after consuming another Mato Peach. This forces Tenka to reassess the situation as Aoba's heightened senses allow her to anticipate Tenka's movements. Kyuka looked very strong in here compared to her other fights, so I'm really not sure how strong she is. Also I was wondering if eating too many Mato Peaches can have a negative effect, and Tenka's words confirm that, that is indeed the case. We see Aoba strategizes to win through attrition, but Tenka reveals she can teleport 666 times in succession, allowing her to wait for Kyuka's victory. The focus then shifts to Shu Shu and Sahara battling Koko. Shu Shu tries to crush Koko using her Mato Peach abilities, but it proves ineffective. Sahara shares that Kuma is the same Shuki from a previous Mato mishap in Kadoshima. Shu Shu decides to take a stand, instructing Sahara to use Formation S, Sahara throws a shrunken Shushu into Kuma's mouth, and Shushu uses her powers to grow from the inside, killing Kuma. Sahara then charges at Koko with one of Kuma's teeth using her Mato Peach ability, defeating her. However, more Shuki appear, and Sahara collapses from exhaustion. They fail to realize that Koko is using her powers to heal herself and Kuma. I honestly loved how Shushu used her powers in a new way, and I really didn't expect this type of creative fight from this show. Also Shushu getting pissed over Yuki was pretty funny. Next we see Himari and Yachio's battle against Neon. Himari is seemingly fatally attacked by a Shuki and Neon, but Yachio rewinds time to save her. Yachio warns Himari about the attack but inadvertently reveals the true nature of her ability to Neon. Yachio freezes time to protect Himari from incoming spears, but she realizes she's overusing her power. Neon attempts to kill Yachiho, but Himari blocks the attack and decides to protect Yachiho while she rests. Neon expresses confidence in her victory as they face off back to back. Himari reveals she has a secret weapon and transforms her hair into multiple weapons, which she then unleashes blindly to expose Neon's location. Yachiho uses her primetime ability to rewind time by 10 seconds, confirming that the plan worked in pinpointing Neon and Akura's hiding spot. Correct me if I'm being wrong here, but I don't think it was ever stated that Himari can turn any part of her body into whatever she copies. I know this is a power-up for Himari but her ability is a bit too vague. Then we see that as Aoba and Kyuka continue their battle, Tenka tricks Aoba into attacking the Unihorn, leaving her vulnerable to Kyuka's assault. Despite Tenka's hesitation, Aoba manages to land a powerful blow on her. The ground collapses beneath Kyuka and the Unihorn, while Tenka passes out from Aoba's attack. Tenka admits her mistake of hesitating due to her concern for Yuki's feelings. Aoba appreciates Tenka's consideration for Yuki, and Tenka humorously considers her as a potential sister-in-law. Aoba allows Tenka and Kyuka to retreat. Meanwhile, Koko, Kuma, and Neon arrive, revealing Akura's death and warning of approaching fighters. Kyuka offers Aoba a chance to surrender, while NEI detects something nearby. I don't understand why Aoba is being so stubborn for no reason, I mean she knows the others are good people, and they care about Yuki so much that they are hesitating to hurt Aoba in the slightest, because it might hurt Yuki's feelings. So I really don't get why Aoba is refusing to work with them. At the end we see Shikoku and Juryu, claiming to be gods, confront Aoba and the others. A tense standoff occurs between Aoba and Juryu. Koko and Neon are abducted by Shikoku and Juryu. 
Shikoku belittles Aoba and her companions, revealing themselves as the eight thunder gods who control the Shuki and seek the extinction of humanity. Juryu attacks, prompting Aoba to shield Kyuka and Yuki. The Unihorn, under Shikoku's influence, attacks Aoba, confirming Shikoku's claim of control over the Shuki. This control is attributed to a snake bite, which has heightened the Unihorn's power and transformed it into a more formidable foe. Kyuka frees Yuki and they confront the empowered Unihorn, preparing for a clash. I wonder why Shikoku looks down on Aoba's group, because Shikoku's group doesn't appear to be pure-blooded Shuki either. Although they do seem to be somewhat stronger than Aoba and the others. Overall it was a good episode and I loved the heavy focus on action. Anyways thanks for watching everyone. If you like my video then check out some of my other videos. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel or leave a comment if you want to say something, you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram or check out my Facebook page, links are given in the description until then see ya.